both sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction have advantages and disadvantages. Sexual reproduction requires two parents. Two parents are required to bring the gametes together so that they fuse together. Whereas asexual reproduction, such as with bacteria, only requires one parent and no gametes involved. We can also see this with many plants, such as strawberries. Strawberries do these runners where little strawberries grow, they grow their roots, and eventually they separate from the original parent plant, making genetically identical clones. So with sexual reproduction, you require two parents. Both parents are required to bring their gametes together, such as an egg, which will fuse with sperm, forming a fertilized zygote. Now the beauty of this is that the haploid gametes will create a diploid zygote with a wide variety of combination of chromosomes. This causes genetic variation in the species. Genetic variation is fantastic because it allows adaptations to changes in the environment, which consequently can allow the organism to evolve. Now with asexual reproduction, you don't get genetic variation, not much anyway. But what it does allow the organism to do is to rapidly colonize an area that they are suited to with genetically identical clones. Now this can be an advantage. And we can see this with sea stars. Sea stars can grow extensions to their limbs, which fragment off. And those fragments grow into genetically identical clones, which means sea stars can quickly colonize an area that they are suited to. The problem with this is if there's a change in the environment they're not suited to, they'll all suffer. Such as if a disease kills one of them, they're likely to wipe out the whole population. We don't tend to see this with sexual reproduction, but the problem with sexual reproduction is it can take time to find a mate. But the time and energy spent finding a mate is paid off by the wonderful genetic variation that it produces.